Hey, hey, Jim, how you doing, Jim? What's up? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> Is anyone there? Uh, can you hear us? We're a little bit late. Sorry about that. Jim's on the phone. He'll be here in a few minutes, I reckon. Uh, I hope. He's stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah. Jim's yeah. stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah, virtual traffic. Yeah, you can uh, hear him, right? We can't. We can hear him, but we uh, we can't see him. Is anyone in the right. chat yet? Stuck, I, I know people have been matrix. thinking, like, what's going on? Or oh, no one's in the chat yet. Hey, what's up? All right, welcome to ep episode thirty-eight of what are you listening to? Let's have some small talk before we start the episode. Let's oh, let's do the uh, housekeeping. There you go, housekeeping. Yeah. Housekeeping is always good. So as always, remember to uh, wow. Remember to uh, <laughs> like and subscribe. That was quick. <laughs> like and subscribe as always. Uh, I'm going to announce next week's show at the beginning of the show and the end. Because we've got a little bit of a change, change up next week. So next Friday, uh, six p.m. Eastern, Friday, August eleventh, we've got uh, some friends from the UK coming on. Well, any of you guys on when I talked about the rough guts? Mm, yeah, Jordan was, yeah, on. was on that episode. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Jim was on too. <laughs> Jim was on when I talked about the Rough Guts, one of my yeah. favorite like current bands from the UK. They were like yeah. really chuffed. That we rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, they were they were really chuffed that we talked about their record on the show. And yeah, kind of became friends, and they're like, and um, they want to kind of come and do it, come on the show. So the three oh. three of like Rough Guts are coming on the rough, show. The Rough Guts episode, the Rough Guts special from the UK, Brighton, England. Nice. But it's it's going to be a good one, but it's a bit earlier because it's UK time, right? So it's like mm. six PM Eastern, which is not bad time, I suppose, and eleven PM UK. So I think we're going to get a lot of uh, UK based viewers. Nice for that episode, and then seven AM Japan time. So, <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be sipping beers at seven AM? Of course, I promised them I would. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> I made a promise. If you're hanging with the guts, you got to expand the gut. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it'll be uh, it'll be rude not to. Yeah, so uh, August 11th, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. UK, 7 a.m. Japan, episode 39. And the week after, we've got Paco from La Vida Essen Mus coming on, and uh, Jonah one. Falco from Career Suicide, and some other bands, and Ville from, like, all our favorite, like, Finnish hardcore bands, Koti Tuhoa and the and foreseen and a bunch of whole, whole other bunch of bands. That's uh, that's coming up. But uh, what do you reckon? Should we get started without Jim? Um, I'm going to go up on my other computer. This one is just not helping. So okay, I'll Jim. Okay. All right, Jim. You want to stay on the phone? Stay on the phone. Stay on the phone. Any uh, messages for your fans, Jim? Uh. <laughs> Keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going upstairs. Give me a minute. Yeah, it's funny because we were like, uh, the four of us were kind of chatting and we were basically doing the episode like before we even like, <laughs> we all even went live. We were kind of like. My Mike actually showed a record. And so did uh, so did Al actually as well. Wow. <laughs> so, well, well, you know. <laughs> We're rehearsing our lines before, yeah. right? <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> Going over the punch lines and the jokes. Yeah. That's right. It's got to be seamless. <laughs> oh, right. Al, any, any news from the pissed camp you want to share with everyone? So, uh, yeah. Um, so the new LP has been completely recorded, nice. mixed, and mastered. And um, as far as I know, uh, it could be on its way to the pressing plant or being <laughs> whatever, whatever, uh, it whatever happens to it. Done to it before it goes to the pressing plant. But yeah, it's everything's done. And, uh, so that and a seven inch are on the way. Nice. nice. We're thinking like probably going to be the beginning of next year by the All time right. we get anything. Uh, who's, who's putting those out? So, so far, definitely it is uh, Revolt Records from Philly. Oh, wow. Nice. And uh, Havoc Records is is doing it as well. 
So that's nice. kind of cool. Yeah. And there's talk that profane might be involved too. Profane existence. Right. So. You're going to have that like bottom of the, of the back of the left. <laughs> it's going to be a little back cover. Right? Maybe a little back thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the whole back it's cover. It's like a butt flap of, of punk rock records to have the, all the labels. I love it. That's yeah. exciting, man. So, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, we're, we're super psyched, and uh, yeah, we're gearing up to do some some gigs. Um, Got a gig coming up? Is it next weekend? October. We're playing in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> nice. Come one, come all. Um, <laughs> place holds eighty people, so <laughs> come early. <laughs> um, Who's that with? Yeah. Like Doc Doc Rotten. It is. It's with Doc Rotten. Um, my other band, the Deacons. Oh, um, doing a ooh, double header. header. Double header, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's always fun. <laughs> well, you know, they, they asked if one of my bands could play the show. They said either the Deacons or the Best. And so I, I put the text out to, to both bands, and both of them said yes. <laughs> so I was like, oh, You're like, <laughs> uh, like I, guess, I guess we're both playing if, if they'll let us. So, yeah, but, but I'm psyched. It's going to be great. October, October 15th. October 15th. Check the socials. Check, check your socials. There you go. Check your socials. <laughs> okay, shall I, let's let's get started, shall we? Otherwise, some records here? yeah, let's let's talk about some records. E, yeah, e, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Jim will be on soon. Let's let's get started. Oh, yeah. uh, all right, so we've all got five records picked out as usual. Um, I'm excited for everyone's picks. I had a whole stack. I'm on, I'm on holiday at the moment, so I've been listening to records like even more, like even more than I usually do. Uh, I've got five. I've got five picked out. Uh, five pretty good ones. So let's get into it, shall we? I've got a new one. Talking about La Vida S and Mus, I've got a new release on La Vida S and Mus Records or Discos. It just came out. Um, I don't know if anybody watching or anybody here is a fan of uh, yeah Rata Negra. It's really, I like, yeah, I like some records better than others, but I I, I do like that band. I like that record. It's good. Yeah, this yeah. Is maybe my favorite. Like record was kind of okay, I thought, but. Yeah, Spanish band, you know, yeah. uh, melodic punk rock band with really great vocals by this woman called Juanita. Uh, I don't know, it's like not, it's a bit like Accidente, you know, that real upbeat, poppy, mm. uh, guitar driven punk. Great band, great, great band. So this is not my pick. This came out like last year, right? Or a couple of years ago. <laughs> I actually <laughs> fooled you there. I thought you were doing that to go to another record, but then I actually believe that was the record. That no, the first this is not my pick, but it, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for uh, showing this though. Rata Negra, as I said, Juanita Rata is Negra. the vocalist and bassist, I think, uh, for Rata Negra. Uh, great band. Very she good. has a new band, and this is the record that I'm going to talk about. So new the band. record I'm going to talk about is uh, Miss Espana. Mm. I was wondering about that record because I, I saw that in some distros pop up, but I, the cover didn't sell me. <laughs> really, with the cake with the insects on I, it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's three piece, three women, Juanita's band. Uh, honestly, it took me a few listens to kind of get used to it because it's basically, like to me, it sounds like Rata Negra with like no guitar because there's no guitar in this band. Wow. It's wow. just bass, drums, synths, and vocals. But it's not like dark in a kind of, it's a real punchy, upbeat in the way that uh, Rata Negra is, mm. except there's no guitar. So oh, it was kind of cool. weird at first to kind of just get used to it because her vocals are kind of pretty similar to Rata Negra. This band has like more heavy bass lines. It's not real like bass driven. Uh, it's all upbeat, but it has that kind of dark, morose atmosphere about it too. It's great. And the synths are really good too. It's like they mm. kind of, they get, quite inventive with with the synths you know uh it's a great great record yeah. it plant to death i heard it described as a synthesizer ray gun was how i someone mm -hmm. i know described like the sound of the synths they're kind of 
punchy and they're not always there like they sometimes it's just like the bass the drums and the vocals and then the so most mm. so most of the melody comes from the bass and then the, there's more like this keyboard like accents and that's like, it that's it yeah yeah yes okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's but not it's angular not, at all it's, not but it's, no it's, not really no it's still it's, just kind of like driving yes punk, it's but, really yeah. like driving straight ahead punk with no guitar if you can hmm. if you can imagine that but yeah it took me a couple of listens because i'm so used to like rata negra sound Mm. and then there's like yeah. no guitar but did you sing the same style too yeah, like yeah 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 upbeat, pretty much yeah melodic yeah yeah melodic upbeat catchy punk with a mm. little bit of a dark edge but like synth driven and bass driven great record wow. check it out yeah, yeah brand new sure. on the la vida es un mus, miss espana yeah. niebla mental is the name of the record which means uh brain fog which is a oh good name for a record I thought. is it a full length or is it a 12 inch it's a full yeah. length record yeah okay yeah well you know that's like 28 minutes these days right so it's like yeah but yeah full length yeah yeah cool yeah so that's that's my first pick of the day check it out miss espana niebla mental nice there we go very cool all right all right well Jordan. i'm gonna do my first one um so I know Daniel has talked a little about it recently in the last couple of days, but I actually was thinking about it a little bit, a little bit too, Daniel from Sorry State. There's just a bunch of like bands that are kind of playing No Way Records kind of style, the kind of 80, early 80s revival style, right. but are playing it kind of now. And they're doing really well with it. Like the band The Hell is fucking really great. Um, there's that personal damage record um, from California. Um, there's just some bands that are kind of starting to sound kind of like that early No Way and early right. um, Sorry State Records. Um, and there was a band called Life Trap that was kind of on the middle towards the end of that kind of era right. of that music when it was really popular um, from Tennessee um, called Life Trap. And they, they were really good, but they kind of, I don't know, I don't know. They put out two EPs, I think, mm. and uh, very energetic live band. I love their singer. Um, and then I haven't really heard anything about those guys, and maybe they've played in other bands, but I haven't heard anything. But two of those members just started this band and put this ah, one. There it is. Man, I just and love the look of that record. I don't know why. Like, it really appeals I, to me. I, I do, too. When I first saw it, I was confused because there's another band called Gun with two ends, and I was like, I hmm. thought it was that band. And so I was kind of confused at first. The gun imagery when I first saw it, I mean, I'm from Chicago where it's like gun capital and all this bullshit about gun violence. So I was at first, I was like, eh, is that just kind of, but then I, I, I fucking love the art and the back of the back cover as I'm like oh, yeah. crazy punk rock dude. And he's like fucking blowing away a cop and a Klansman and the Cowboys <laughs> running after him. And it's just, it's kind of absurd, but it's also like, I don't know. I think it's kind of awesome. Huh. And the color scheme is great. But anyway, the band, Size the art, which is done by uh, Keith Caves. So I guess he's been in a couple of bands in Pittsburgh. I'm like, uh, so anyway, um, but this rules totally sounds like early eighties, hardcore comes in with an intro and it's really bass heavy. Like I kind of was like, when I first dropped it, I was like, what the hell? Cause it was real like buzzy oh. um, and really loud bass. And then it just totally kicks into just like these, very stomping hardcore songs like real ugly kind of poison idea but doesn't sound like poison mm -hmm. idea and okay. it's the same singer as life trap that sings for this band this guy nico and i know he's a great front man so i'm like just imagining him singing this shit and it's just it's kind of <laughs> decrepit it's like very raw sounding but at the same time you can hear everything and it's really loud um yeah. and it's just like hook after hook I know that that you know, sorry, state said it sounds a little bit like Black Flag and has kind of a Southern California sound, but it doesn't really have, in my opinion, it has elements of like circle jerk kind of guitar playing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like, I hear like more like chronic sick kind of like, but like uglier kind of, and like you know, Poison Idea ish. There's some talking while you're doing like the vocal stuff, you know, like mm -hmm. like Jerry A does. There's a little bit of that element, but Nico makes it kind of different. Mm -hmm. um it's fucking great I, I honestly i think it might be my favorite of this kind of music that's been played right now i really like that hell 12 inch as well or um so um but this is great i, I really recommend it sorry state put it out so it's available you should go pick it up 
Nice. Yeah, that that the hell and that one like I'm really eager to check out. They haven't made it to Japan yet, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. They have a song called Satisfaction that is it's so driving and melodic. It's so awesome. Nice. I would love to see this band because I think it would. I think there would be uh, quite a few people dancing when they play if they play in Chicago because it's there. They have there's a song called uh, uh, Prisoner's Tale that's just like it has some like I don't know it's just awesome it has a little bit of dark kind of like almost like Poison Idea type energy but it doesn't sound like Poison Idea so I'm not <laughs> trying to say it sounds like those bands but it has that ugliness element to it um, it's it's great it's it feels great. like Poison Idea. <laughs> It, it, it feels like like we're getting fucking drunk and someone might get hurt tonight and it might be an accident. Oh, but we're gonna like it's just like what's happening tonight. You know what? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it has a kind of a you know, yeah, the space might not survive this show kind of feel. <laughs> there we go. Nice. So, National represent, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. I would love to have this band come play Chicago, so I think they would kill it because I think a, a lot of the the uh, it would just fit in really great here. So I think people would go nuts for it. Um, so I really hope they do some touring on this record. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, gun, <laughs> gun, G U N, G U N, and it, I don't know what the the acronym for it is. It doesn't say anywhere on the record that I can tell. So Make I don't your know. Your own, <laughs> yeah. And it's self-titled, so. Okay. I'm gonna ask at my. I'm gonna ask at my, you know, my local shops if they can, uh, they can try and order that for me. Mm -hmm. There you go. They put out tape too, right? Pamsef. Yeah, they had a demo. There you go. Oh, okay. All right. They're working on. James says they're working on putting a a drummer together. I guess they need a new drummer. Uh, I don't think they'll have any problems finding a drummer. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody's gonna have to move to Nashville to get it going. But I'm sure, I'm sure they'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, Al, what's your first pick of the day, my friend? Okay, so I'm going with multiple formats tonight. Multiple? <laughs> Is that a CD? That's a CD. No. Oh wow! <laughs> the official Hooligans 29 Years Wasted CD. So this. The official hooligans were around for the blink of an eye in the mid in the mid nineties uh -huh. in Connecticut. They played a, a handful of shows. Um, this is actually the the original seven inch that came out on Eugene Records back mm -hmm. in the day. There we go. Nice. Um, yeah. So three song seven inch, three uh, three piece band, kind of real like rock and roll, just punk. Uh, lots of you know. Chuck Berry riffs on guitar, uh, super sloppy live, super drunk band, um, fist fights between the band members on stage. Uh, <laughs> one of those type of bands. Um, they're hooligans. The official the hooligans. hooligans. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, the, the guy who played bass in this band, uh, George Waters, was in Adam 12, which is an old like New York City mm. punk band from back in the you know the a7 days <laughs> um oh, okay. yeah um and so a couple weeks ago the singer who lives in chicago um he came back to the east coast for the a weekend and played a reunion show mm. uh, kind of to celebrate putting out this cd now the cd is everything that was recorded it's not on the seven inch so there's four songs on the CD. <laughs> but but also a, a flipper cover too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so as he said, uh, so you've got no win situation, Percocet, toilet bowl, and sex bomb. And uh, as he announced Percocet, um, you know, the song's about uh, Taking, taking lots of Percocets. It was a really funny song before the opi op opioid act, yeah, yeah, epidemic. No hate dating on that one. Okay. Yeah, not so funny anymore. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it was fun to see. The, to see. It was actually just the singer and a couple hired guns, like uh, the guitarist from Showcase Showdown play bass. And, oh, yeah, cool. It was, it, was full, it was cool. It was fun to see them. Um, but anyway, so... This is available on Bandcamp <clears throat> through the official Hooligans site. And um, yeah, it was cool to 
you know, I kind of wish they put everything on the CD, but, you know, not my band, not my choice. Let them do what they want. They're but, official. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's a little, you know, a little piece of Connecticut history there. That, uh, yeah, there you go. Rejuvenated. 29 years wasted, so, yeah, that's <laughs> the time between their last show and, the, and their, their uh, the show before that. They were wasted. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and how you doing? Uh, I'm trying to reboot my Wi-Fi. It's not. It's my Wi-Fi that's the issue. Ah, uh, okay. My All network, right. The whole network thing's crapped out. Oh man. All right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be here for you. We'll yeah. wait for you. you. Keep going, and you oh. can catch up with us. Yeah, yeah. You can do all, all your five. You can do all your five picks at one in one in one go. There you go. All right. Speed round. Yeah. I have an ugly record from Australia for my next pick. There's a lot of ugly records from Australia, but uh, I got one. Uh, I saw this in the shop the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and I just looked at it, and it immediately caught my eye for several reasons. The first reason was the name of the band. Maybe the best band name of all time. The band is called Leather Towel. <laughs> Hey, it's a good name. It's a good name. It's a good. It's a good name, right? It's a good name. Yeah. Uh, let me show the record. I, I've kept the shrink wrap on for this one. Forgive me, because the I haven't taken off the hype sticker yet. But yeah, you, you can. Uh, there, oh, you there, there you go. There, there you go. I love like uh, first. First of all, it's like the name of the band, like stuck out, and then like the uh, the kind of electric blue like color scheme. Yeah. So kind of like stood out to me. And then we have the hype sticker, and it's it's really funny because it's like, you know, a super group they call it, and it's like members of Aus Mutants, who've definitely been oh, mentioned on the show Australian band, yeah. before, yeah, yeah, and uh, none the Garage Rock Band, yes, mm. yeah, and then also, I don't think Alien Nose Job had been formed yet, but there's definitely like an Alien Nose Job like connection mm. with this band too, but okay. it's a super group, it's like the Super group of like the most unknown <laughs> bands, like, <laughs> and, it, and the album's like called Four, like Volume Four or just Four, and it's their first album. So I, you know, I'm not sure what's what's going on with that. Mm. Ugly, ugly music. I actually played it on the wrong speed twice before. I you wanted to make it happier. <laughs> <laughs> I played it on 33, and I was like, this is like some am rep, real ugly, you know, mm. like trough, like trough rock. Pretty good, I like this, but then I realized it should be played on 45. So it kind of sounds like um man, like an AMREP band like trying to play like snotty, like hardcore. Uh, hmm. like, like apparently, hmm. like they kind of came together to like form a hardcore band. <laughs> okay. hey! Hey! It's on well, my phone tonight. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'll talk to you later, Jim. All right. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, flag. oh no. there he is. There he is. Jim, if, if you just put the phone the other way, like, that would be perfect, right? <laughs> Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Jim? He doesn't need to hear us. <laughs> Well then, <laughs> uh, uh, ugly. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, ugly. yes, ugly, ugly Australian record that kind of yeah, and they even call it a blistering modern masterpiece of failed hardcore because like they came they together to do so hardcore, but they, they just they, they went in the right direction. Yeah, they wanted to do hardcore, but it failed. It sounds like some huh. weird old am rep band like trying to play hardcore, but it's great. Been having a great time with it. it on, Eat any speed, it's fine. <laughs> like 33, 45, ugly, ugly. It's an ugly record, dirty, filthy. Mm -hmm. And it's like not egg punk. I was going to bring up egg punk. I didn't want to get yeah. into that whole debacle. Again. It's not, yeah, it's not uh, like ugly. No, right? no, it's too ugly to be an egg. It's too, it's like yeah. really too ugly. <laughs> I mean, you know, it sounds like a, like an early Discord records band, like crossed with like an early am rep band making this mm -hmm. ugly like noise. From and when when is it from, Mike? It's is pretty. It... It's 2016. 
Okay. Oh, right. Okay. So you know, That's not too new, not too old. Who yeah, put yeah. it out? Uh, Hozak Records. Oh, from Chicago. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great label. They put a lot of stuff for it. Yeah, Todd, Todd's been doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, right. I think it came out in Australia on a different label, and then Hozak did it for the... For the nice. Label, so. Cool. There you go. Yeah, man. Leather Towel 4. Leather towel. First LP. Ugly Hardcore. Ugly Punk. Failed Hardcore. Whatever you want to call it. So. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we try to do Jim next, oh. or should I... Should... Hang on, he's calling again. Oh, sorry. Jim on the phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I for audio. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, okay, so we'll leave this. Don't worry about it, man. We're going to kill him oh, a long distance good. bill here. Uh, <laughs> I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you hear okay from there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. We got you, Jim. Hey, you look good. Yeah. You look... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, it's fine, man. No, that's cool. Do you want, do you want to do a, a record? Do you want to do your first pick or you want to wait? I'll wait my turn. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right, Jordan. All right. I'm trying not to look at Jim because he's making me dizzy. <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, actually, I, I picked out this record because oh. it was reissued back in let me see 2017. Um, a really awesome hardcore band from New York City. So I know these guys down here know them. Uh, this band. Um, they're around from 87 to 89. It's a very brief period of time. Did a seven inch, which is a fucking complete classic, um, hardcore record mixed in with some oi influences. Some of my favorite shit, you know, like negative approach, you know, style hardcore, um, put out an EP, put out a bunch of comp tracks on different stuff. And then prank records did a anthology of life's blood. Um, hey. Which is one of my favorite fucking records, Defiance, the, the EP. Mm. But they did a prank did an absolute wonderful job with this reissue, and I think everybody, even if you didn't have a chance to get the Veriform reissue of the Defiance EP or have an original back that came out in like '88 or '87, yeah. this thing is just absolutely great. It, it combines all their tracks, um, you know, from the split seven inch with uh, Sticks and Stones and uh murders among us comp tracks it has an a, and i'm not huge into gatefolds but this is an awesome gatefold like of the flyers and like the the awesome artwork almost void style artwork nice. and i mean the only band only played like something like 25 shows or something and they got like probably 25 of the flyers in there <laughs> um and it's just great it's it's you know and i I don't hear, I mean, my generation would love this fucking band, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about Life's Blood much. And no. I think it's fucking absolutely brilliant, raw, aggressive, oi, hardcore. They talked a lot of shit on their records. Uh, they A little bit of a scene divider. They got into it with different people and the, kind of the Spirit of 88 kind of crew back in New York. Um, and then two of the members went on to be in Born Against, which talked more shit and was another great New York style band, but um, yeah. yeah, Human Power, great fucking, <laughs> great fucking Youth and Rage, not for the weak. It's probably my favorite fucking song on the record. So, I know that took Ken a long, long time to put together. It took him like f five years. I maybe. think it took five years, from what yeah. I read. Yeah. yeah, five years, and then the band. It took him uh, five years before that to kind of work everything out. <laughs> And right. then five years with Prank to make it come out. Yes. And like you can still find copies. I, a prank might be out of the records, but he's pressed it a couple of times to make it available. And it's just, mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of those records that anybody that's into American style hardcore should fucking own this record, yeah. in my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel in the Connecticut area and, you know, about Life's Blood. Life's Blood. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think you're spot on with uh, saying that they really didn't get the the due that they're deserved, you know, in the, the pantheon of New York hardcore because, you know, they're kind of one of those overlooked bands, you know. For, For sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a double LP too, right? I think it's just a single LP. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. it's just a single LP because there's not – actually, when you think about it, after all that, they even have, like, some live tracks on and here. 
contracts, right? Murderers. And there's tons of contracts, but it, it still is only probably like 20 songs on here. Right. You know, so total. So, but classic, classic fucking record. Listen to Gun, listen to Life's Blood. Punch the <laughs> there wall. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jim, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just trying to rectify the situation live. <laughs> <laughs> live via uh, satellite. Here he is. All right, all right, all right. Well, I, and I'm in a, an area where I don't know this is the upstairs office. Ooh. Ooh. But, uh, all right, this one I just got in the mail the other day, and um, I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. Uh, you can see it. Oh. Post vacation compilation. Ooh. Yeah. And it's got all these like fake bands like the, the Mayhem on uh, Quincy. Oh, yeah. And Pain, but they up the uh, mix on all this stuff. You know, they remastered it. Sounds really good. <laughs> and you know, there's some uh, vocal stuff in there. They even have Fear, the real bands on here is Fear doing their Saturday Night Live tracks or that infamous Saturday Night Live uh, thing. Uh, but it's got uh, it's got the Queen haters on here, Messy TV. That's a good you know, one. I can't do it. You're too yeah. heavy. It, it, it's a fun record. It's got Ramones on here. That's the other real band. Um, happy they, Happy Birthday on the Simpsons. They have that on here. It's the back of it. But uh, but uh, or the, is that backwards to you guys? I don't know. <laughs> it's bad, but it's okay, Jim. Don't worry about it. It's Punk exploitation, right? That's the name of the record. Uh, punk Punk exploitation. And uh, it's on Nice Pink Vinyl. I just got it. I got it from uh, Generation Records in New York. Ooh, but uh, great awesome, awesome stuff. Like you know, to to you know, hear how many VHS knockoffs, of, you know, or over you know, generation of dubbing, and the sound quality went down and down every time we wanted to see that scene. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, the mayhem and the pain tracks are the best on here. <laughs> Total fake, you know, Hollywood production. Band. Uh, make up a punk band. Yeah. You know? Oh, you know what else is on here? Uh, the the I hate you from uh, Star Trek Four. Oh, uh, okay. Death Grips, uh, the punk rocker on the bus. Yeah. That's on here remastered. It sounds really good. Too. <laughs> yeah. but this this is a this is a fun spin. This is a lot of fun. And uh, I knew what I was getting into, but it, on top of it, to have a really good mix and have it sound awesome. <laughs> Fun record. <clears throat> but uh, the it's English fans cover, here is, uh, not the nine o'clock. It's Mike, do you remember them? Spit, spit, uh, spit on you. Spit boy. Yeah, spit on you. No, no, no. <laughs> spit on you. Uh, gob on you. Gob, gob on you. you. Gob on you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the bouncing song, which is like some kind of ska yes. Let's like, no, not, not forget this. Like, this is like Rowan Atkinson, right? Pre yeah, Mr. Rowan B. Atkinson. But yeah, if, if you could find this, I, I just got it. It's, it's hilarious. Fun time. This is a fun record. Looks fun. Yeah, that's a, a summer a summer party record for sure. <laughs> Jim, do you want to do like your second pick as well? You do my second pick. Mm. All right, Al. Jordan, I don't know if you know this band. Mm. You probably do, but Alan, I know him not. The Goons? The Goons. Oh, yeah. The Goons. yeah, I know the Goons. And, <laughs> and this, this uh, from Washington, D.C., The Goons. Mike, yeah, are you familiar? Yeah. I am, yes. I don't own the records, but I do. I am familiar with them, yeah. Well, they, they, you know, it's funny. when They were out, like, what, now, in the 90s up to early 2000s? Yeah, late 90s, and, yeah. From Washington D.C. and uh, um, this is live at the Black Cat, but mm -hmm. a, a powerful record. I'm glad it got on vinyl. But they only ever their albums were only ever on CD, so mm -hmm. you know they have seven inches. But uh, th this came out. It's like copies that BML series. They're in the yeah. 90s. All those BML yeah, yeah. Live, live seven inches. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, this this is really good too. I mean, it came out. I think the live live at the Black Cat came out on CD maybe 20 years ago, but uh, mm. now it's on. So, and it's got this beautiful, it's backwards to you guys. Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> wow. <That's cool. clears throat> Action packed record. This is a really fun record too. Excellent US hardcore. For sure. Is the is the sound quality okay on it? Croony vocals, very like a, a singer, he crooned. Yeah. Oh wow. So, kind of like a personality crisis from Canada, like that kind of crooning. All right, that's my double whammy pick. <laughs> nice. All right, thanks, Pam. So it, it's not back, for people watching on YouTube. Jim's picks are not backwards for us. It watching like me. Mm. Uh, Jordan and Al, they are, but for everyone watching, they're not. So that's a right. that's good news. Yeah, my, the Wi-Fi in my area went down. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, it's good good to have you on, Jim. Can, we were the man oh, yeah. trying to keep you down, trying to keep is, is is this, is the sound quality okay for a live show? Because it's a live show, right? So is the sound quality pretty good? Like you can hear everything pretty good in that record. Oh yeah, it's 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 very okay. well recorded off okay. the board. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Cool, cool liner notes. <clears throat> the goons. I've seen that name around. Isn't that? Oh, fuck. Isn't there like a couple of people, or at least one person from the goons, on like the message, the Facebook board? Oh, I'm sure. What do you oh, sure. Search, search is on Facebook. Search. That's it. Yeah. Search. That's it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I got a bu I got a buddy from Virginia that's a huge Goons fan, so he's always playing it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, I mean, they were kind of an East Coast thing, but I, you know, yeah. they, they should have been more known. You know? Yeah, they just did yeah. a reunion, right? Like, yeah, they did a reunion about six months ago. Yeah, I couldn't go. Yeah, yeah you. <laughs> nice. All right, beautiful. All right. Al, what's your second pick of the day? Well, I'm going to keep things on the East Coast, oh, keep things in Connecticut here. Um, <laughs> with this reissue that came out a little while ago, um, another uh, Radiation Records reissue that, you know, they seem to be putting out just like <laughs> shit. all the cool stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, so the Vatican Moby, Commando, right? Moby. <laughs> probably one of my top you know, top five Connecticut punk hardcore bands. Um, but yeah, this is a great record. Um, I mean, I can't remember if there was anything on the, you know, like inserts or anything in the original, but there's not <laughs> the reissue, which is kind of a bummer. You know, I always like a lyric sheet, but, you know, pretty cool yellow vinyl. Um, they reissued this at the same time they put out that they also reissued the two seven inches yeah. and squad for God and just a Frisbee seven inch. And the cool thing about this is it's got, you know, it's a short record. It's more like any, like a, like a 12 inch EP, you know, it's got one, two, you know, three or four songs on each side, but it's, it's got the two songs that, that were on the make it work compilation that weren't on anything else. So they just added them onto the ends of each side here, which is cool. Cause I think those two are my favorite Vatican commando songs. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I don't know, Jim, you've probably seen these guys a bunch back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I saw them open up for, uh, Dave Kennedy's in New Haven oh. and, uh, at the grotto. No, at, uh, twilight zone, which is now the health food store edge of the woods. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, but uh, I mean, I've seen them all over the place. They were kind of, you know, a total anthrax, anthrax club regular band. Yeah. And and uh, but uh, um, they remember remember they would have uh, their poet Dirty Ernie, and I think yeah. he's on, he's on that one. Yeah, he does a whole. There's a spoken word yeah. check. And what are they yeah. starting? What are they way to start the day? Um, <laughs> but they did a. Uh, they also did a reunion. When was it? Probably seven or eight years ago. Right when Trump came in office, because they did that. Because oh, Moby used to be in Vatican Commando. Yeah, yeah. Moby. <laughs> yeah, and, and Moby Moby decided to have a reunion with them, and those tracks are pretty good. You can find them on YouTube. Yeah. But was was Moby are, the singer or the guitar player? He was the drummer originally. The drummer. 
Yeah. Okay. But he played guitar when they did the reunion. Like he just walked. <laughs> yeah, I got confused by that. Yeah. 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 He used to he used to work the door at the uh, Anthrax in Stanford. You know, when he was back in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. That's one of the one of the things that uh, still bothers me to this day is that I never got to the old Anthrax in Stanford. That, Sorry. Um, because I was lived too far away. I was too young and I didn't know anyone who drove <laughs> at the time. You know, the only like punks I knew were like, you know, when I was 13 or 14 were younger than me. So if anyone was going to steal a car and drive, it was going to be me. But <laughs> that just wasn't happening from where we were. But we were aware of the shows, which was even worse. Like, yeah, you know, we listened, listened to the Adventure Jukebox um, on uh, WXCI and We'd hear all these show announcements and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe we can't go to this show. I can't believe the Dead Kennedys are playing or Black Flag or, you know, whoever the hell it was. But anyway, Radiation Records did a good job. <laughs> Put in yeah, some they, lyrics next time. <laughs> they do pile a lot of stuff. I've seen a, some complaints, you know, like no lyric sheet or something. They put like the wrong band photo on, like, was it the... They did like the icons of filth, but they put like a picture of exit stance or something on the back of the record or like something <laughs> like that. Oh man, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, they're putting out a lot of good. Lot of good There's a, there, I heard there was a couple of bands that didn't 100 percent sanction their stuff on that right. too. Well, it's tough though, because well, like there's like some ex members are not for sure can't contact. Them oh yeah, the yeah. Band, you know. yeah, yeah. All right, round three, right? Round three. We're Round cruising. three. I got a couple of records on uh, Beach Impediment. Great label. Mm, Beach great Impediment. Label. Right from, uh, we're talking Richmond, right? Richmond, Virginia? Yeah, from Virginia, yeah. Yeah. So I got I a, Richmond, yeah. Yeah, a couple mm-hmm. of records on Beach Impediment, both real different styles. This could have almost been a short, sharp shock opener. I didn't do that today, but uh, this came out last year, but the recordings are from about 10 years ago. I want to say this band is like unknown and underrated, which is always a big claim to to, to make because I don't know. Man, this is great stuff. I'm talking about this band called uh, Mercenary. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's an Atlanta band. That's it. The, the, oh. the band from Atlanta. The, the singer just recently passed away about yeah. a year ago. That's right. Um, yeah. And they put out. I think they had an EP as well, which was really good. That's and then a they. Trip. In, in the liner notes, with, yeah, uh, some, you know, did a lot of shows in Atlanta and was like, you know, you pretty much knew him if you were in the punk scene around that era. That's yeah. a great record. I like that record. Really good stuff. Like, like I want to say, like ahead of ahead of the curve, but they they're kind of doing what like a lot of bands are doing now. It's like kind mm-hmm. of Swedish, like totalitar kind of influenced, yeah, hardcore, but like done like in the American way, with like some mm-hmm. you know, American style hardcore like thrown in there really really good stuff so it's like that demo and a compilation track and like some tracks that were going to be in lp but that never That's, never yeah. came out those are the best tracks because they were a little bit more developed but like they were only around for like a year a year or two didn't put out but just did these demos and like man this is mm-hmm. really really good like swedish influenced like american american hardcore punk from like 10 years ago right 10 years ago yeah yeah i think so 10 years ago yeah and a bunch of members like went on to be like in an extended hell that band extended hell and mm-hmm. the hu- human block yeah yeah it's like they went on to be in the yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of those guys are like in like five or six other bands over time <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. oh and jim like one i was gonna i had to, God, I'm glad I didn't forget that. Like one of the guys, Tyler, is now in like GG King. Jim, you said you like GG King, right? It's great. I love G-G-King. You love GG King. King. One of the guys from this band went on to play in GG King. It's right? all that Atlanta crossing over of people. It's well, I think yeah, Jesse. It's Jesse, right? That's it. Yeah, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Tyler. Jesse's no, no it says off. Tyler. Tyler went back yes. to playing drums and is in Shocked Minds, Predator, and GG King. Yeah. Yeah, he's in he's in a, a New York really good New York band now called Suffocating Madness. Mm. Mentions it on here too, Jim, on the liner notes about yeah. that band too. Yeah. 
so yeah I mean, if you haven't like checked out this band i if you like that swedish style hardcore with a, a little bit of a twist to it this is really good stuff it's cool that it came out too because it's yeah. you know i mean i mean it's not really like a necessarily a tribute record but it's it's a band that would have like you know it you know is should be showcased i guess you know I, and, yeah. ha and have their stuff on vinyl exactly oh absolutely yeah yeah it's funny i've said this before when when, you, when i kind of like look things up these days you get like on the google search the first thing you get is like daniel daniel's <laughs> like review right, right up and so yeah. this was like his record of the week like from march like last year and he wrote a really good review of it nice. which i've done my best not to quote from i'm not going to fall into his trap of like you know copying and pasting daniel's reviews because they're so good but uh yeah smart guy yeah he, he is smarter than smarter than us but i i didn't <laughs> i didn't copy and paste anything that he wrote but, uh, yeah mercenary demos collection on beach impediment records from from last year great hardcore from atlanta originally there you go nice Heartland. All right, I guess my pick, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, so I'm going. I'm going for a Chicago band because I, I I feel like every time I'm on here, I got to highlight a Chicago band. Um, so I'm going back to 1981, and this Ooh. record is a 12 inch. It did get reissued in 2020. It was Wax Tracks' first record they put out. Wax Tracks actually became it was a record store here in Chicago mm. that got really big in the industrial scene like bands like ministry and things like that and honestly i'm not that qualified to talk about wax tracks because it just really wasn't my scene but this is the first record they put out and it was one of the first real crossover kind of punk hardcore uh in chicago um this band was from from like 1980 to about 81 82. the band is called strike under i'm sorry there's a plastic sleeve um this is the actual record there you go um so i got a reissue and this is like a kind of a fan the fancy one that's like screened and has this cover or whatever so now it's worth a lot of money but it actually doesn't look as good as the just normal one that's like white cover and has the print around it right um it's a five song uh 12 inch but it's just great great kind of melodic hardcore um and very chicago um a lot of melody in the music I mean, uh, the bass player went on to be in Naked Ray Gun and then in Peg Boy. So it kind of predates some of that. Um, it's just, it's great. The best tracks on it. I love the first track, Sunday Night Disorientation. And then there's a song called Elephant's Graveyard, which is kind of a, it's just fucking great, melodic, kind of like just, just awesome song. It's just, it's melodic, five songs. The band was very short lived um they broke up uh, there's two brothers in the band i guess they also would fight when they would play quite a bit so um i guess that caused the band to basically break up because the two brothers would fight all the time during sets um and then trial by fire started with the other band members they kind of broke up which is another early classic chicago punk band that's kind of had a reissue fairly recently but um i say in the greater punk world maybe these people don't know them so um but yeah um, Strike Under also has some tracks on Busted at Oz Comp, which is a a, a, a compilation of Chicago punk bands. That, it, there was a, a a venue called Oz, and so a bunch of the bands that played this club, and it's all punk bands and stuff. So, um, and then that was it. They just had this five songs, and then a couple songs that they did uh, for that that comp. Um, there's an EP that came with this limited edition one. They basically they do Damage Good cover um from gaming of four and there was like another song that's kind of okay it's not as good as the, the tracks on the 12 inch but if you want to track it down i mean this one is kind of pricey because they got the kind of limited one but they it, it's still available for a pretty decent price on uh if you look at it but you definitely should look it up a strike under immediate action 12 inch cool that's it, like oh, go, ahead. Just, go ahead go ahead like oh so is it just straight up hardcore or does it have any kind of industrial influence no industrial at all it, it's okay. it's it's punk um so that most of the songs are pretty mid-tempo they have a couple of fast songs it's mostly punk but um it, they're dabbing in hardcore a little bit it's kind of like okay. like there's a famous uh photo of uh, pierre kedzi who's the bass player of the band wearing like a discharge shirt so it's like guys that were like oh shit and then were but hadn't quite 
gotten like the chops to play hardcore yeah, yeah. but like i actually like that better because there's like this melodic punk edge that's in there too that just makes every song kind of kind of memorable i guess you know especially if it's only five songs you know so but yeah wax tracks put it out um and that was the i mean that's one of the few punk records they put out they went pretty much into the industrial shortly yeah. after that pale head <laughs> pale head I yeah love that <laughs> That's an interesting story behind that record for sure. Ian McKay yeah. and Al Jorgensen. Yeah. yeah, but it was all like on a trip and stuff. Like, <laughs> where like Ian was in a London and like recorded it, but didn't know it was going to be used. And then it did get used. And then they got like a fake Ian to sing live shows or something. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, I didn't know all that. But, yeah. Fake so, Ian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was another bald guy yeah, that was no. singing. <laughs> so it, was like, it was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. But. But anyway, Strike Under. You should you check it out. Uh, it's, it's a really awesome, like, underground classic. And since it's got reissued fairly recently, it's not too hard to track down. And honestly, like I said, I have the limited one. But the regular version one actually, I think, looks better and is true to the, more true to the original version. That's like roots of that, the Chicago sound, like effigies. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, you see a lot of that element of really naked ray gun. Um, you know, Trial by Fire is another band where they, they actually go a little bit more hardcore than this. Mm. Um, which is like three, I think three of the four members started that band. And then that evolved into like Naked Ray Gun and then started to evolve into, um, you know, a couple of the different bands from that era. So. Man, I love the, that guy's bass sound. The bass is like, <laughs> best, I mean, like the, the, best the, the best ever. Yeah, he's uh, absolutely fantastic. And the bass leads a lot of these songs right. and it's just like, it's just, it's so awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to like see Peg Boy and Naked Ray like a couple of times in the UK, and just mm. like, man, it's like his bass sound is just so like the Stranglers or something like that, right? Just real, yeah, riven. yeah. He's definitely er, like definitely influenced by like some really yeah. early seventy or you know mid seventies like punk and like, right. and then and he knows how to like just yeah he rolls it into the songs and it's great and always with a cigarette hanging out of the corner of the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which became a little bit of a Chicago style. Like, oh, yeah. Was, yeah, my my friend, uh, my, uh, an old friend of mine, Dave, used to play in uh, Punch in the Face, and he would always have the cigarette yeah. hanging off <laughs> while playing bass. <laughs> I thought those guys were the coolest man, like Peg Boy and Naked Rig, and they it was kind of shocking because they looked like real, like normal, clean cut dudes, you know. And them, coming to England where everyone's like, you know, like crust and spikes and they just like, and they were getting abuse from the audience, you know, like, you know, like oh, yeah. Bristol, Bristol style, like heckling, you know, yeah. but they won over the audience within like half a song because they were like, they're so good. Yeah. Well, I always found if you could get through that, it's friends for life. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. That's a great, that's a great uh, recommendation. I'm gonna check that one out for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Check I, it out. I love that style, like that that Chicago style from that era. Love it. Love it. All right, Jim. What's your? Back on. On. Scroll up so I can see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Boogie Hammer. What is that? Oh, Boogie Hammer. <laughs> Boogie Hammer. Yeah. I don't know. That. I like the title. Oh, yeah, but from Austria. Oh. This, uh, it's not their first record, but um, I, I was listening to some of it. I was like, all right, this sounds good. I think I've been listening to it. I like it a lot. I think there's better in the future for them, but uh, they definitely have like that stripped down uh, rock and roll sound again, a lot of Chuck Berry kind of riffs. They have this, there's a lot of humor in here, which kind of reminds me of uh, Turbo Negro. It's sung in English. Uh, it's, it's really well recorded. There's there's some shine through songs, and then it, it, the other songs just kind of aren't there. But I, I feel like there's more to come from Boogie Hammer. And, and, um, uh, Are they smashing up a car? Yeah, they're smashing up a car. It's, it's like one of those... Uh, in, America, in America, oh, you know, Jordan. But um, oh yeah, they smash up Japanese cars. Is that? Yeah, they break a Japanese bike. Or yeah, yeah. Like I don't know that. Made in the USA bullshit. Yeah. 
passing it up. <laughs> well, it's an old picture because that's an old car. But, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, everything on here rocks. There's a couple really the, – the, the song that really made me crack up was – Middle-aged skinhead rock and roll. Because <laughs> it, it was it's a good song. <laughs> it's like, <"Ooh." laughs> but, uh, uh, fun. It's it's uh, it was uh, this was released by uh, Charlie from Anti Cymex on his Cymex label. That's right. And I, I can't pronounce the other one. Uh, to vast, that attacked records. It's like a split between the labels. But uh, I think I saw something where uh, Charlie was in, like, the Partisan, playing with the Partisans, and they played with them in Austria. And that's probably where they got, you know, to be friendly with each other. But uh, there's a lot of great, uh, um, just, it's just, you know, it's like drinking, you know, like those first two Turbo Negro records, just fun. It's a, it is fun. <laughs> Yeah, but the like, Tornado had a couple records before they really coalesced, you know. Yeah. and uh, I feel that that's what Boogie Hammer. That's what's going to happen with this one. Yeah, you know, there, there's there's the next the, the next album is probably just going to knock us all back, <laughs> you know. But they, if they, they still they're still finding their way, but man, it's 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 a fun ride for sure. I, I like, checked I like out the, the I like the X Hammers, kind of like <laughs> Judge or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's by popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie awesome. puts out a lot of the good, like rock, like rock and roll, different different kinds of rock and roll, like Knife for an yeah, Eye, and like the professional, professional Yeah, and uh, what's that? The Chris Rowling Band, right? Uh, do they do? Just, does he do? Does he do the Warhawk? Rock 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 yeah, yeah. Warhawk is also kind of came out at the same time as yeah. that, right? Oh, same time and on same level. This also has like a rose tattoo kind of feel to it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but it's 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 fun. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, um, mark my words, there'll be a fantastic boogie hammer record in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I checked out like the promo video they have for like one of the songs, and I, I liked it. Yeah. No, I have it. Yeah. The promo video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like you know, on, it's on YouTube. Check it, out. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube. Yeah, one guy's wearing like a fez, which reminded me of like Happy Tom, you know. <laughs> Boogie Hammer, you heard it here first. Boogie Hammer. Nice. All right, uh, Al, what's your next pick? So. So I'm sure this has probably happened to all of you and probably everyone who's watching and listening. Um, going to see a band and there's an opener that you've never heard of before and they end up just like blowing you away. I love that. That's it doesn't best. happen often, but <laughs> occasionally or sometimes like when your band is playing and there's like an opening band and you're like, oh shit, we, we got to really get our act together here because... <laughs> I don't want these kids to blow us off the stage tonight, you know. Um, that happened to us once a long time ago uh, in a basement show with a uh, a certain band that very from Pittsburgh that very recently became notorious, um, oh. who, who I won't mention. But they were. Please mention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, we went to see that. So I'm going to pull a total 180 here with the with the styles. Um, we went to see uh, Nico Case. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with her, but um, she's a, a singer songwriter type. Uh, does kind of originally from Canada. Um, I think she lives in Vermont now, but um, she had an opener. Um, and this was uh, this woman named Kara Jackson, and she was just playing, you know, solo with uh, just her acoustic guitar and, and uh, had like an incredible voice, had really good songs. Sounds like a voice like Nina Simone. And she's like 23 years old and That's plays cool. guitar and kind of has the phrasing of Joni Mitchell. So just one of those people that you're just like, 
you know, man, she's got, she plays like someone who's in like her forties or fifties, at least, you know, that's right. kind of been, been around for a long time and, you know, sort of has that gravitas, you know, to the, to their song. So, um, yeah, so we saw her there and then I drove into the city to see her play, uh, an in-store at rough trade records in Manhattan, uh, just for like 15 minutes. <laughs> She's playing tomorrow, like 10 minutes from here, but it's sold out and we didn't know about it until too late, but I'm hoping to try to grab a ticket to that. But um, Kara Jackson, she's got a band camp. Um, she was also uh, like the teen poet laureate of the U.S. at one point. Oh, pretty interesting, okay. you know. Um, That's cool. Yeah. If she's that young, yeah. and, and as you're, I haven't heard it, but yeah. that's a I'm like Nina Simone, where there's experience in that voice. You know? Yeah, She's totally. Got... Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what you get, but really pretty. Ooh, nice, don't yeah. you? Pay off the mortgage with that in ten years. I was say about Boogie Hammer, there's more ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you know, in this this record isn't just um, it's not just her and a guitar. It's got some instrumentation along with it. You know, kind of sparse, but but kind of you know just kind of building up the songs a little bit of accents and um yeah that sounds cool i would say if uh you know you're in a mellow mood you know throw check out check her out on Bandcamp or any nice. of and all like the streaming stuff um yeah like nina simone that's quite a comparison yeah i mean i, I don't say that lightly you know <laughs> her voice is you know like that yeah. like i said her, her her lyrics and her you know the way she sings is a little more like mm -hmm. Kind of Joni Mitchell esque, I would say. It's a little folky, um, as far as not like folk music a little bit. Or I mean, you said Joni. Yeah, Mitchell. yeah. It, if I had to, yeah, it's it's a little jazzy, a little folky. Mm, yeah, cool. A lot of finger picking kind of guitar stuff that you know, jazz kind of chords, but you know, kind of raw. So mm. yeah, nice. it's cool. It's cool. My mother is a big Joni Mitchell fan, so oh yeah. I Bro, here, Tony Mitchell in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That came out this year, right? And put it in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. that, that, that's, cool. that's real new, too, right, Al? Like this year or last that year? That is this year, yeah. This year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a couple months ago. Yeah, right. it came out. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm got another beach impediment record but this is old stuff it came out ah oh, this also came out like a couple of years ago but it's an old band that was resurrected by uh beach impediment uh, richmond virginia band maybe one of the first bands one of the first bands uh from richmond virginia hmm. talking about the beaks i like that record it's good right it's a good one it's yeah. really good it's good yeah, yeah. the beaks the oh yeah i love that 1979 to 1982 so it's mm -hmm. basically like they had two singles out right mm -hmm. and yeah. then like both recorded at washington in washington dc at this place called mm -hmm. well one place side a was recorded at the soundbox side b recorded at no no evil studios like in washington dc they put out like two seven inches so this is like both those seven inches and then a bunch of bonus tracks from like the same the same two sessions great vocalist called christine gibson in the yeah. like Pen Pen Penelope Houston, Alice Bag, Cat Arthur mm. from Legal Weapon, real like strong like front woman, great great singer. The A side is a little more ramshackle. The B, B side side's is, better. The B. Do you read my notes? Yeah. It's like exactly what I was going <laughs> to say. The Dad, Daddy's a really good song. Yeah. And what's the one about Guiana? About Jim Jones? G yes, Guiana. Yes, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, the second the second EP I think is also better than the first one. In that I point. thought so too. Like they're both good, but the second they're one good. they kind of got a little bit slicker, a little bit better. Got a sound, shows. just a little yeah. bit, and the production is better. Just great. I don't yeah, know. Kiana, I love the way that Kiana song. Oh. Apparently, they were like quite conf confrontational live too. There's a, some snippets of the live show I think in there too. Real Ooh, good, yeah, good punk. <laughs> Like, yeah, know, so I'm not. I'm not familiar with this band at all, so I'm really psyched to check this out. I didn't. I, I didn't know yeah, it either until, until it came out. Well, that record for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I was just if I don't too. remember correctly, they didn't play that many shows either. I don't think. I, I think they're kind well, of a short-lived, co- almost college band or something. I think pretty much all their shows, the Flyers are in here. That's like only about yeah. ten. The most <laughs> no- noteworthy one is with like um, they play with uh, Shrapnel, which is the pre like Monster oh. Magnet band, right? They say Shrapnel. 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 Yeah. From New York. Yeah, it's Jersey. Yeah, New York, Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. They, yeah, they play the Ramones all the time. Yeah, yeah, they put out that one really good seven inch. They played with them in New York, I guess, or somewhere. But yeah, short lived band, two seven inches and some uh, extra tracks. Real like high quality, like punk from like yeah. the late seventies. No, I that, I didn't know too much about them, and I bought that a couple of years ago. And the two tracks I mentioned just floored me. I was <laughs> like, I, I listened to them over and over again. It's real good song. I, I listened to that record quite a bit when I first got it too. I, I, yeah, I just got it recently, like a couple of months ago, and I've been. It's been in the in the pile every almost every week. I'm like, ah, maybe next week, maybe next week. It's like, yeah, I'm, I've got to show it because you know, it's great. So yeah, it's great. And, and it's, a, it was about their big noses or something. That's it. They all have big noses, so they the they call the the man had <laughs> That's right. And they love like it. That, uh, boating. That's for the name of the band, like beaks. <laughs> I, I, I love that stuff though when something gets reissued and you just I mean like and I, I pretty much buy almost everything off of Beach Impediment because mm-hmm. it's such a they don't put a ton of records out but it's really high quality of what right. Mark does. So when I saw something like that, the Graven Image was the same way that that twelve inch, so a, a, a band I didn't hear out or I might have seen on a flyer somewhere but like never connected that it existed. And then when you get the record and you get it home and you play it and you're like, oh shit, there's like a lost gem here. Exactly. I, I yeah. love that shit. It's like I the know, best like, word. I didn't want to kind of over hype it or like get over excited, but it is like really, really good it's stuff. Lost really gem. good stuff. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. And as yeah. an added bonus, when I was on, our friend Chris Corey did the remixing and the remastering of that. Oh, no shit. Side B. So mm. there you go. So I, I did Side B, that. baby. Sounds great. Yeah. It sounds really good, right? That's, that's our friend Chris, Chris Corey responsible for the great sound side piece so nice if you like like late 70s american punk beats, you'll love it yep great band. i'll find that you'll love it yeah for sure yeah yeah i know that's right you, you like yeah. it from what i understand of your taste I yeah just, yeah i was just picking up my phone to to uh check this gogs but i feel like <laughs> <after the show. laughs> i don't imagine it's hard to find because yeah. i mean i i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know, like it's, it's like two years old at this point, couple right? Couple years, yeah. Couple of years old, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I play that a lot. I, I go back to those. That's uh, good stuff. Awesome. All right, all right. Well, I, 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 I keep anticipating like Jordan's next pick. Is it? Is he going to show it? Is he not going to show it? <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm gonna be really i'm gonna be really obnoxious and show a bunch of records to get to my record oh that, hey nobody so I, just, like, like I, right, so I, I don't really like the i mean not no i don't i take that back i like seven inches i probably like seven inches more than most people my age especially if it's a hardcore band and they just nail it out of the park and it's awesome however i do understand i, I do show a lot of like lps we all do because it's just like it's like having a complete record to show. Right. But I bought a bunch of good records. This is a good record. Puff up. Oh, bring yeah. it back. Bring it back. Puff yeah. up. Bring it back. Yeah. Puff up. I've had a lot yeah, of that. Very good. Buy it. But I'm not reviewing it. Another good record <laughs> I bought recently. <laughs> oh, yeah. Buy it. Buy well. it, but I'm not reviewing it. <laughs> and then number three. <laughs> buy this. It's a Chicago band. War You'll efforts. like it. War but the record I'm actually the one that I listened to most recently, and I've been listening to the most out of all these seven inches that I bought recently, hmm. is this brutal, ugly ass hardcore band from Portland, Oregon. And I got a soft spot in my heart for Portland, Oregon, and ugly hardcore. I'm talking Alienator. Alienator. Oh, World wow. of Hate. Okay absolutely brutal hardcore and like it is so proficient in the way in which it's executed it it looks a little bit like you know i mean you look at the artwork you're like that's just going to be kind of like degenerate maybe maybe oi because there's a guy booting someone in the face and shit it's not 
it's kind of just like brutal, ugly, hardcore with these like crazy time changes and like mosh parts, but then they go out of it and they go to a fast part and they go back in. It's like kind of strangely, weirdly technical, but also fucking awesome. It's just, it's a lot punched into like a four song EP. Um, It's just, it's, I don't know. It's aggressive. Um, It has that ugly kind of like Portland sound um that you might find but it's like and 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 the review someone wrote that or for the write-up it said raw power and coc and there is a little bit of a crossover element that i find in it but it's mostly just the guitar because the drumming and the vocal is just absolutely brutally pummeling hardcore i mean it is they have a song called uh the, the title track world of hate and they're just like alien it's just it's it's just it's ugly 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 shit but it's so it's so good four songs every song like punches you in the face it has that kind of like old school kind of new york hardcore sound but like different and though it doesn't sound like talk is poison it reminds me in the way in which the the band is so proficient in the way they can change tempo so quickly and go back and forth and find melody in a bunch of different tempos it kind of reminds me a little bit of like that even though it doesn't sound like talk is poison um so anyway uh yeah out of all those records that's the one i keep i keep putting on even though those other ones are awesome i could totally highlight each one of those um this one's just ugly ugly so portland the hardcore that isn't crust and isn't deep it like is not crust at all ugly hardcore. I, I actually saw some pictures because i think they just recently played the east coast and they're all like tattooed up looking dudes i was like oh geez like there's their music is kind of scary like it looks like i mean you listen to it and you kind of want to punch a wall I mean, it kind of has that kind of just like, it's just, it's really aggressive sounding. Mm -hmm. And like, it has a little bit of that COC, what just like, you know, a little bit of crossover, like early COC, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's just, Mm -hmm. but it's like ugly and fierce. And yeah, so that's it. I don't know. Four songs, you should buy it. You can. (laughs) I think there's only 300 pressed of it. So I don't know how, I mean, I went to the label and they still have some. Yeah. Um, and it's Convulse Records out of Denver. All right. So, best songs are Senseless Violence, which is the first track. Fucking great. And then World <laughs> of Hate. Other songs, I'm Nothing. I'm Nothing. <laughs> I mean, come on. They have, they have a line. I, I wrote it down because I thought it was so great. Someday I will be dead. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> That's some nihilism right there, yeah, baby. Dude, it's just like... I'm getting angry just thinking about it. It's, it's angry hardcore, and I, I love it, dude. It kind of... It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not really into the whole, like, swinging arms and, like, tough guy blood is blood shit, so it's not like that. It's, it's still uh, ni- nihilistic, right? Like It's, it's just nihilistic. Maybe, in a, maybe in like, right? a little bit like the one that Jim missed, the leather towel... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jim wasn't here. He's got a challenge. Ugly. This Let is also towel. ugly. In an Australian ugliness. Australian ugly versus oh, that, oh, that American ugly. Smoking shit, man. <laughs> I mean, look at that Literally. guy. He's like, there's like, he's like kicking oh. some guy in the face. And then there's this little creepy guy. He's like, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's like hardcore nice. by people with problems. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People have that's problems. <laughs> Time to work out for the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can dig it. I know you well, can. I'm going to look that <laughs> up. I'm still yeah, I mean, a bunch oh, of the distros sound. had it, but you can actually find, if you go to Convulse Records, you can, they have, supposedly, they have copies of black and red. So. Right. Okay. Beautiful. All right, Jim. Let's get ugly. Oh, I mean, I was so intrigued. I didn't even like get the, this out of the sleeve yet. <laughs> uh, wow, I'm still I'm still blown away by that one. <laughs> All right, this this is a band from Olympia, Washington, and I was reading that they're now in Sydney, Australia. Ooh. The Gobs. The Gobs. The Gobs. This is like. Uh, I want to say my first impressions, it's like a real fuzzed out spits. I love the spits. 
I do like and, the space. Uh, like yeah. this whole, you know, like in Australia, the the GTs. I've, I've talked about them before, mm. and uh, this like synth, up tempo, like hardcore derivative, but with synths in there. And and but this this doesn't disappoint. Um, speaking of nihilism, there's a, this is one of my favorite title tracks in here. Adderall or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well uh it, it 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 is super fuzzed out i mean you got it into that kind of stuff I, I like a lot of distortion um the lyrics are super fuzzed out it sounds like mosquitoes but um it's it kicks ass this this is a collection of their demos on a german label Ooh. um cool. the First techie tongue tongue trigger. I don't know what that means. Ersta Ersta techie tongue trigger trigger. Mannheim, Germany. But uh, um, yeah, this this is punk as fuck as far as I'm concerned. And uh, <laughs> I like the cover. Uh, and and uh, it's angry. Um, you know, there's some there's some you know. I drink beer, fight your parents, get a dog, <laughs> stuffed, uh, Adderall or nothing, getting high, super bar, <laughs> die like a cat, breaking bottles, which is an awesome track. This is the last breaking track, breaking bottles. bottles. But um, I listened to this a bunch of, on the internet and I decided to get the, because I really liked it. <laughs> Awesome. But, I mean, the cover would sell me alone. That cover is so awesome. I think I would probably just buy it. Yeah, man. Yeah, alien. My art, baby. Yeah. It's this is my friend Sean's it. art that and from Cleveland. It's but, cool. Uh, there's like an alien stick ass on the turntable. Yeah, it looks very <laughs> Cleveland like. Taking a piss on Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It looks. This looks like an alien vivisecting a punk rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love this it. Is an alien copy. <laughs> God. That's awesome. Uh, that's like an underlying theme of which I didn't expect today of like ugliness and nihilism. I thought it's going to be like a nice, happy-go-lucky like summer. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> bands who used to beat it, beat oh, each other right, on right. stage. The fucking world's <laughs> on fire. <laughs> I'd roll or nothing. I can't wait to die. Work it today. I really liked it a lot. And, I, and I, I, I've been listening to it all week. So there you go. <laughs> when when so did I, it come I, out? I had a, oh, a couple months ago, I had a spitz kick, man. I just totally, I was doing an art piece and I just sat down. I think I listened to the complete spitz discography. <laughs> That's awesome. I just wanted to get out of my motorcycle and crash into a wall. <laughs> I think the Spits are playing live tonight somewhere because a lot of people who normally watch the show are at a Spits gig somewhere. I think it's tonight somewhere. Well, they're missing out. Same. Right? I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I wish I was there too. I mean, we'd, prefer, we'd, we'd rather be there, you know. <laughs> Right. Uh, the, pro the, problem is, the problem the problem with Spitz, the, the problem with Spitz gigs in Chicago is that um, the lowest desirable people show up to their shows now in Chicago. I don't know if that oh, happens. There you in go. Spots, your <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A cup of sour, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Al, what's your fourth pick of the day? Okay, so mm. Believe it or not, we're going to go to oh. 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 the co-defendants. Co-defendants. Don't so, know it. Me neither. Another Connecticut connection. <laughs> oh. There you go. Um, someone I, I, I believe I have uh, featured on this show before, uh, a guy named Chesky from New yes, Haven. Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Um, so this is, this is his band with uh, – it's him and – Sam from the band, the singer from the band Get Dead, who's like a, I believe they're a Fat Records band. Um, so that guy really, he's he's got like a his delivery, vocal delivery is like a lot like. Some of it's kind of like Tim Armstrong, kind of 
you know, vocals. Um, it's, it's crazy, man. What's up? It's, it's like hip hop type stuff too. Uh, Chesky stuff. Yeah. Chess and yeah. Chesky. Uh, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like a Chesky record, but with someone else singing on it with him as well. And it's a little more, you know, punk. Um, it, it was, is I think somehow like fat Mike is involved with this collaboration. Like he's produced it and everything. And, plays some of the instruments on the record but it's kind of cool this is actually like you know if i were ever to do this you could like punch this out and this is a stencil uh, that's so nice yeah. <laughs> so yeah so they definitely had had some uh really nice packaging on it but uh again it's like i don't know it's 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 a really mix uh, it's a great mix of styles it's got some hip-hop in it it's got some uh some you know punk in it it's 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 he all over the place. Very you know? Cool stuff too. What's that? Like, I've seen him live, and it's, it, there was a lot of soulful stuff. And 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 I saw him just down the street here from my house at the space. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he had, I, and I wasn't too familiar. I, I heard of him, and I went down there, and he had like young people crying. They oh, were really? like, oh yeah, out. like They're like. Crying? And I was like, and I yeah. told my buddy, I went down there with my neighbor. And, and I said, if he can get young people to cry, he's going to rule, man. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he's, you know, he's been around a long time, you know. Um, according to Discogs, they met at Gilman Street. Well, there you go. <laughs> I know Chesky most is Bay playing. Area thing ever. What's yeah, that? Chesky, this is West the most Bay, Bay Area thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, they are they're, Jim, these guys are playing at the ballroom on September 3rd. Oh, I'll see you there. Yeah, you could walk there. <laughs> Four blocks. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, Codefendants. Uh, I've this is probably my most listened to record of the of this show oh, so far. So. Oh, wow. cool. I was. No, my neighbor took me. I heard of him. You know, he's a local guy for mm -hmm. us, for me and you. Mm -hmm. But, um, but uh, I, the he threw it down, and some of his lyrics mm -hmm. were about. Yell and like maybe his older brother's records or something, and like freaking out in his mom's apartment. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely like, I mean, he's you know, he's a DIY dude, you know, like he plays basements all over the place, and yeah, um, no, but, I mean, and he's Opus's nephew. He's proficient. Who's his nephew? I said oh, he is Opus? Opus's nephew. I think. Yeah, he's a Lawrence. I got a story for you. <laughs> no, that's for a different yeah. podcast. But anyway, I think it has a few or a cousin or something like that. But uh, yeah. co defense. Wow. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get a grasp on it. So you're saying it's just like it's like one guy, but he has like a bunch of and there's like hip hop in it involved. Also, like kind of so, melodic punk. So by I'm himself, sorry. this guy okay. Chesky, he does okay. hip hop. He also okay. plays with an acoustic guitar sings okay. and raps while he's doing that um but then this is like a full band with another singer so he's there's two singers um kind of trading off and singing together and um yeah uh some of it's kind of nihilistic uh <laughs> if we want to put it in i mean so here um open up this vein like an old cold razor blade survival oh. isn't pretty it's flesh hanging off of fangs Hard to bite that hand when it's when it's all that's left to eat. Strip the meat off every finger that's ever gotten close to me. Sounds like a happy guy. That's that's the first that's that's the opening of the record. So the opening lines. Hey, we're getting into nihilism. But it goes it. I mean, it goes up and down. It's 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 like a roller coaster ride. So yeah, it's worth wow. giving at least a listen to. Okay, cool. Hey, I just I got kind of thrown off because there was like fat. fat he really does. Yeah. And I was so impressed that he had teenage kids like cheering, like yeah. they were like bobbing. You know, it was like it was like kind of like the old Frank Sinatra screaming girls or something. It was really something to see. I was I've, like, I've uh, seen little kids cry at a chemtrail show, but it was for a different reason. Different, different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I, I made children cry too, but also for. <laughs> Yeah, different reason. Right. <laughs> Last round. It's well, be I'm, I'm interested, Al, because I I know he lives like only a couple miles away from me. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I remember, oh, last time you were on, you talked about the Chesky record, right? Last time you were on. Yeah, yeah, that his last solo record, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move about as far away from nihilism and hatred and disgust and right. ugliness right. as you can possibly go for my last pick. Yes. Hey, guys, it's summer. Summer's here. Like, a couple of weeks ago, I went down to the countryside for the weekend, took my little portable record player, and I took like a, a small like stack of records. This is one of them. I was blasting it out to nobody, like in the in the Japanese countryside. Uh, I'm going back to like 1967 Japan for this. It's, it's a compilation. Ooh. It's a compilation Ooh. LP. Um, I'm. Let's have a look at it, shall we? It's called Nippon Ooh. Girls, Japanese pop from 1967 to 1969. Pop beat bossa nova. Every song on this is just like makes you want to be alive makes you want to live forever makes you want to dance in that like austin powers <laughs> like kind of way you know it's like groovy it's just groovy upbeat yeah. pop which was very important in japan at the time this was rebellious stuff at the time because they were kind of doing away with the old guard with like lots of orchestration and anchor and there's like electric guitars and like hammond organs and stuff on this and it's like very american and also like uk influenced it's kind of quite outrageous and rebellious at the time this kind mm. of real like in your face like upbeat pop music all sung by women obviously it's called nippon girls so like every song uh, it's uh you know sung. i think this is a uh, this is um i think this is jun mayazumi on the cover this is her and like her the lead off track is called black room not in the white room black room man check that song out You'll be dancing around your room like it was 1967, twisting by the pool. It's just great, great pop music with like nice kind of fuzzy electric guitar, like on a lot mm. of tracks too, and that that real like raw is like surfy. What's that? Is, is any that tracks surfy in in nature? Like a little bit. There's a little bit of that. There's some like boys kind of style, or uh, not so much on this one. There's some definitely like a little bit of bossa nova, and like um. some like raid like kind of distorted guitar and there's some horns on here too and organ but like it's great and it's so well put together it's like a labor of love from this woman called um sheila burgel who's a new yorker uh she's a dj as well and like she got all the stuff together did the liner notes it's like there's liner notes about every singer it's like oh uh, cool. that's liner notes it's like yeah, a real like really that. really like nicely done like compilation of like 60s like japanese pop or female fronted um it's on big beat records which is like an interesting mm -hmm. side big beat you know british label we might have like damned records and motorhead records on big beat you know yeah it's pretty cool that it's on big so beat. is it more like uh you're saying like uh I, I think i sent you a link a couple months ago about the the cambodian rockers around the same time and it's not uh, that, that Kim and psych with the female singers and it's like not quite out. It's more polite than that. But for Japan at the time, this was like the new, like dangerous music, you know, on the scene, like this, like real punchy, like pop music that was kind of imported from the West and given like a Japanese makeover. Uh, yeah. It's great. Great. Just, I love it. It's great stuff. I uh, want to check that out for sure. Check it yeah. out. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it's a total like summer record. And, and it was on CD first. CD has more songs. I don't really like they could have made it a double lp but they didn't but but like all good compilations there's a volume two there's a volume two, volume two. so you know there you go nippon girls volume two which yeah nippon nippon girls, pop uh, beat. <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll it's 1960 that's like this great post in it. I'm not. Oh, I should. Like, you got it. There you go. There you go. It's like got every Ooh. single. Seven That's inches. cool. Wow. Why is it on your wall? The pic. <laughs> too precious to put on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's got all the seven inch, the original like Japanese seven inch picture sleeves and wow. real, real, real like well done compilation of some great. When did that come out? Um, the vinyl came out in 2013. Jesus, already 10 years old. Oh wow. So, yeah. 
might be hard to find. You know, if those if those seven inches are like rare, sought after kind of That's things. The or funny the, thing, some of them you can find in the dollar bin. Some of them. Oh, you nice. Can. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, some of them not yeah. so much, but some of them you can. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. nice. Yeah, there you go. That's my last pick of the day. Some great Japanese pop music. Sounds cool. cool. From the sixties. I didn't get to say cup of pie in the beginning, but oh uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of a cheers. Cheers, Jim. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I missed it. <laughs> My cup, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it tastes good today. Yeah, All right. Get a big like Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got, I got, I wrote, I, I did research on two records that I've been listening to. So I guess you guys have a choice. Should <laughs> Mike already, Mike already did a compilation. So I should I do a compilation? Or by the same record label, should I do a recent reissue this record label put out? Should I do a reissue or should I do a compilation? I think everyone's kind of waiting for the the <laughs> compilation to be unleashed. Okay. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll do that then. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. He's the one. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right, to. so let's talk about it. Has anybody else listened to this record? I ordered it. Hasn't, hasn't arrived yet. Okay, yes. so Mike's listened I, to it? It's sticking to me. The first one really knocked me over. Okay, so I had a little trouble with this one as well. It, it took me about four or five listens to finally like get over the fact that it's the second volume. Right. And the first volume just, you know kicked me in the dick so it was like kind of yeah. hard to like yeah, so. kind of yeah. flip the script and not have a comparison thing right because yeah. i think if you really do compare if you do a comparison the volume one i think is overall a little bit stronger record yeah however i really do like the way that this one is put together as well mm -hmm. um remainder records put it out just came out in 2023 um i think it came out it's been about two months i think it's been out it's the same product as the first one. It's like a lot of EPs, except for this one is Heroes from the Night, Volume 2, um, Punk, Pop, and Wave from the UK Underground from 80 to 84. So uh, it's a little bit later. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of more shtick in it than I would say the, the Volume 1. Mm -hmm. uh, the Volume 2 has a couple of um, tracks by a, a lot of one-hit wonder kind of stuff in there, obviously, yes. but... Um, there was a couple of tracks by by just kind of um, like like there's a show tune that's in there. There's a couple of show tunes and there's a TV song that's in there. So there's a little more kitsch involved in this one than I would say the first one. Mm -hmm. Like you're pointing. Yeah, it just reminds me of that Knuckle Girls series too. Like Knuckle yeah. Girls one, two, three. They also started doing that, throwing in some like TV stuff and like some. More, not famous singers that had like one good song and they put that on there but still good but they definitely were starting to pull from those kind of places yeah too. yeah and there's there's i think there's three tracks on it that are like that and to be honest with you the first track is also one um that uh shelly stevens does secret love which i guess is mm. a song that's from like a 1953 western musical and i'm not aware of what the musical is and he doesn't really say it in the liner notes either so I didn't it, I didn't recognize it. So it like still like worked for me. But um you could tell it was just a little bit kitschy. And so the first couple of songs it takes a little while to get into the record. I think a little bit more than say the sec the first volume. But I'm that I'm done comparing it to the first volume. All right. I'm just going to talk about the second volume <laughs> from here on out. Um so there's like I said there's some TV show and some song. There's also what is it on the second side? I find the second side is stronger than the first side overall for the songs that I like. Um, however, the two songs I like the least are on the second side. So you have that kind of variable going on with it. So again, like the first comp, it's, 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 it's EPs um, and there's songs taken off one or two EPs. Right. Um, so, you know, and a lot of these people have been kind of forgotten or, I mean, I don't know any of this stuff. Um, there was a band. There was a band that I really liked, um, Aqualla. They put out a post punk song, the second song on the second side, and I swear to God, it could be like a daylight robbery song. It could be a song that you could hear today, mm -hmm. and and honestly, I could see it being covered. And so, and it's so different from the departure of like anything else I've heard on these comps. 
and that it's totally a post-punk song. Wow. That's pretty awesome. The Shelly Stevens song that leads off the record actually was recorded by a future guitarist at Chumbawamba. So that was, that was a weird fact. Wow. Um, though it doesn't sound like Chumbawamba at all. Wow. There's a lot of like, obviously there's a lot of 50s kind of like revival songs on here as well. There's a song on the first song on the B-side called Jackie, um, or it's by Jackie, and it's called July Girl, which is a total fucking hit song. The first three songs on the second side are my favorite part of the record. Yeah. And um, it's Jackie, July Girl, um, this band La Homme de Terra, even though they're English, they're not French, but they use a French name. Um, song get a, get a grip which is also a uh, kind of a, a bub bubblegum pop kind of song mm -hmm. and then aquala with a song called fall which is a total pop pop punk song mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it, it's really great i mean i i do recommend it i i you know i mean i'm a completist in a way um like i said i think the second side is a little bit stronger but also i i wasn't particularly fond of Weiss is a cover song um from a musical Mm -hmm. um and that didn't really do much for me it's sped up um and there's keyboards there's a lot of keyboard work there's some saxophone work on some of these songs yeah. um, it's definitely into the 80s <laughs> it's definitely in the 80s and as a matter of fact there's this one band that kind of intrigued me with does the last um the last two songs of the of the a side a band called who's george and i guess they put out an ep with a song called who's george which is on this. And then I guess that band broke up and then the singer went on to try to be a little bit kind of like Kate Bush in appearance, but it doesn't sound like Kate Bush at all. Um, and they tried to go a little bit more 80s, kind of new wavy. And she has a song, uh, it's called, uh, the band is called The Walk, but it's the same singer. And it's called uh, I Didn't Catch Your Name. But it's also a greatly crafted tune um, by, by somebody kind of like not making it in one band and then they went solo and didn't kind of make it, yeah. but put out this awesome track. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear what other people thought about it too. Cause um, I, I feel like with these comps, they're kind of thing where everybody kind of finds a song that kind of means like they like the most that like other people don't and mm -hmm. other people have different opinions on what they think is the best one. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's great. I think you should get it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm just <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting for my copy. <laughs> and I'm worried, Mike. You're gonna get it, and you're gonna be like, ah. Uh, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it, I mean, the buildup is kind of insane, right? I mean, we've been waiting for the volume two right. for a bit. Um. But it did take me three years right. and five uh, listens to finally get like over the volume one issue. Right. So. <laughs> Jim, Al, do you guys get get it yet? Yes. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, but. Like I said, I listened to it a couple of times and I, I felt, as Jordan said, it, uh, uh, kind of tepid, but I want to give it a chance because it could grow on me. You know, I didn't feel punched out like I did up on the first one. You know, it's like, wow, this is like, you know, and, uh, but uh, um, it may grow on me. Things do, you know, <laughs> that's me. You know, I'll, I'll listen to some three, four times. I go, ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's kind of how I felt, too. First listen was kind of like, yeah, you know, it's it's definitely not bad. But, the, you know, there's a few, like, 80s saxophone things in there that I was that kind of turned me off. First song has a pretty prominent saxophone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but th there was definitely some standouts in there that, you know. That yeah, I'm looking forward to, to checking out. Sure. But, yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll grow on me over time as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I really feel like you kind of almost have to divorce yourself from the fact that there's a volume one. I don't know if that Japanese comp is sort of similar to that as well, where no. it's just, but it does not feel like a continuization in a way. It, it, I mean, it does in a, in a weird way, because there are songs on there that are trying to sound like 50s pop, which very much the first volume has. But there's a little bit like that, like I said, the show tune stuff that like, you know, yeah. when you're reading about it, you're like, oh, that's why it's so incredibly poppy or whatever. A third song has like a saxophone leading the whole song, but actually I don't mind it. There, I mean, that one song that I had highlighted, uh, the second, the last song, "Who's George?" Like, hmm. there's almost a theatrical kind of part of it that sounds like the adverts a little bit. Yeah, um, and that it's really interesting because it's just kind of in the middle of the song. They kind of change the chorus and they go to a different chorus, and I was like, "Whoa, that's almost like note for note, like." an adverse song there. So there's a little thing, there's a little 
there's a little touch and go here there with some stuff in the pump scene. Right. Yeah, I'm excited to get I can't wait. Oh no, did we steal your thunder? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted someone to show it. I, I I was hoping that we'd all have a copy just to show up to show for, for I can get mine, but Jim, you gotta go downstairs, right? I gotta go face that pump up on the floor now. And the other record I was going to highlight was this one. So get oh, this one. Yes. <laughs> Fucking great, man. Yes, that's on that, um, that's on the way too. That's a Tom GS Tom General Speech recommendation. He recommended that to me. Like that yeah, it's it's <laughs> absolutely fantastic, especially the B side. Right. We'll, we'll get to that probably another episode. Late, later this month, perhaps, perhaps, another perhaps, episode. perhaps. All right. Jim, what's your last last record of the day? <sighs> this one arrived yesterday. Yesterday, huh? And uh, totally, I heard some of the tracks already, but uh, um, enzyme. enzyme, yeah, I've heard great stuff about that. Enzyme. Right. This. <laughs> A ton of fun to, um, if you're familiar with Enzyme or anything uh, Yep has done, um, uh, you know, Piss Christ, Chromosome, mm -hmm. and Enzyme. And, and uh, they're, they're coming over here like in a week. They're playing Skull Fest Ooh. and they're touring around. But uh, Jesus, this has everything you want as far as uh, distorted out, buzzed out. Disorder, <laughs> you know, not but not aping it. Confused. It's got really good stops. Really good, like paint peeling vocals. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it the panning on it. If you're wearing headphones and riding on your bike, you'd probably fall off your bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bicycle injury Where, record. <laughs> your balance <laughs> you thrown off, and and but they use that. To you know, and uh, they're they're panning uh, is, is is some of the best panning I've ever heard. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, it it's an attack. Um, geez, you know, they're, they're really bringing it to the table on this one. And, yeah. and, and um, um, you know, the vocals are dystopian as hell. Um, the uh, I listened to it one time. I listened to it at work today. I snuck a couple of listens in while I was doing some of that work today. But uh, uh, but and, and they've got some video clips they made for this. Look them I, up. They're, I, they're, they're crazy, up. Jim. They're crazy. Hmm. Those video clips are crazy. Huh? Those video <laughs> clips are crazy, right? How crazy are they? The, the, those video clips are pretty nutty. Like nutty. They, they're, they're What's really, happening? Like, I want to say they're about to come to America again. They've been here before, but, um, you know, in Canada. But uh, it, it feels like a spearhead approach. You know, it's like he's lining everything up and he's just going to execute and just take over this area and then leave and leave the fucking dead, smoke dead of the north of the United States. It feels like, look out, America, here we come. And, uh, and, and I, it's fucking good 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 I, I recommend this find it listen to it um um it's on which is a uh, yeah absolutely and uh la vida es un mousse from uh london um but uh i i was just blown away by this it's one of my favorite records this year i think okay i gotta buy it god damn it <laughs> <laughs> definitely has that like Oh, these assholes putting out these good records, and you gotta go buy them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. very between like the show, between the show and the group, <laughs> the, the Facebook group. I mean, it's costing me a fortune. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough life. Yeah. But that enzyme yeah. does give me that like. This group makes me poor. <laughs> <laughs> Psychedelic confused era of like that late era confused. It's like a little bit like that. Reminds me of that enzyme. Which, which 
I honestly don't really like that much, but I've been hearing a lot of great stuff about that fucking enzyme record, and yeah. I did like Piss Christ a lot. Piss Christ is more is basically like kind of frantic, right? Awesome. Yeah, it's more frantic, yeah. yeah. This is more confused. Well, late late period. It's got that like a, psych, like a little bit of that weird psychedelia running through it. Okay. Like that. But, uh, and the videos do too. It's like fucking. You'll have yes, a, don't have a don't have a seizure. Not, it's not overblown. There's yes, still a semblance there. But they uh, they're about to arrive. I'm going to see them at Skullfest and oh. look out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a wild front man. I remember I. He is a wild yeah, front man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, No, no, no he, he, in a boot. I didn't. I don't take. I don't take. My wife doesn't like to go. My wife just doesn't kick it out. You know, my wife like, doesn't. Oh, no, can't do it. Pandemic. <laughs> yeah. My wife doesn't go to a lot of shows, but I. Um, I went to a Piss Christ show with like a La Fraction, which my wife does like, and they they played in Chicago. <laughs> the singer jumped on her head. Like, like the guy, the singer from Piss Christ, like she jumped out in the audience, and she's like, "I hate this shit." She hurt her neck. <laughs> yeah, he gets in the audience, doesn't he? He he likes to jump in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, but that to me, that's a sign of a good front man. No, he's a great front man. I loved it. I was like, "Sorry, sweetie, don't stand so close." <laughs> yeah. He's he's on the attack. I think that's it's like it's more. You know, calculated. Like I said, it feels like it feels like they're organized spearhead. You know, they they do like the regional thing. Like, oh, okay, West Coast United States. All right, we're gonna get Central Europe. Okay, we're just gonna do UK. I don't know. That's it. You know, or just Japan. You know, it's like you know, they they do things very methodically right. as far as organizing. yeah. They're not playing Chicago. Yeah, they haven't. <laughs> They haven't played Chicago. Nope. <laughs> I haven't played Japan either. Because they will though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Al. What's your last okay. pick? Last pick. Last pick. Last pick. So I went down to uh, last weekend. I went down to um, Richmond, Virginia, there you go. for the Over the James festival i guess you would call it i mean it's more or less a show but <laughs> um mm -mm. which is avails um you know the the show that they put on and kind of curate the bands for so it was uh actually like the gaslight anthem played this year snap case strike anywhere um it was a good show overall uh you know it's it's always fun to see a veil in their hometown because everybody goes bananas and uh and it's a cool place to just hang out and you know get some friends down there and of course there's vinyl conflict to go and buy records at did you uh, go <laughs> what's that did you go i did yeah nice of course yeah i don't think i actually showed anything that i got because i haven't really right had a chance to really throw much on the turntable but um the night before the show uh some my friend that i was staying with tipped me off to a, a house show that was going on and it was this band. Corridor. Corridor. From, I've heard of this band. Uh, I've heard of this band. Yeah. Yeah. So they were playing in uh, a house show in someone's kitchen. And uh, is that the band from Croatia or? They're from, yeah, they're from Croatia. Uh, here's yeah. A, here's the uh, thing. I heard great stuff about this band. Wow. Yeah, they were um, they were really good. They uh, they're kind of mid tempo, almost almost post punk, but Dark with a hardcore edge. Very like reverbed out vocals, um, super tight. You know, just kind of noisy and and um, dark. I guess you could call it like dark punk or whatever, you know? Um, yeah. A little and a little post punky, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, cool, cool people talk to them a little bit and uh, picked up their stuff. They're on tour with uh, 
band Nag from Atlanta. Great band. Who were also really good. I picked up one They're of their great. records. They're well, great. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought their drummer was insane. Like, <laughs> it's really, really Fucking good. Chaos. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I guess that you know they're they're touring touring together. They're I think they're still playing right now. You know, like they're going back after this week. But um, definitely worth checking them out on Bandcamp. This this cassette I got is their album that that should be coming out pretty soon. So um, you can listen to I think there's like four songs on on Bandcamp right now. So that's my last pick. That's I heard great me. stuff about that. I heard yeah. great stuff about that band. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they couldn't get a show in Chicago and they played in, in, in Northwest Indiana and I had oh. to work. And so my friends played with them and I liked that band nag. So I was yeah. kind of bummed. I didn't hear about the show earlier. Right. Um, and then everybody was raving about that band. Oh, cool. kind of like right. a dark wave post punk, but it's like really awesome. And it's from Croatia. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, God damn it, dude. I wonder who's yeah. going to put out the record. Anybody know who's going to put out the album? I don't, but oh, I want to get it. Let's see if it says on here. It just seems um, like a another La Vida Essen. If it does, I probably <laughs> read it because it's a Croatian. Yeah, I know that the, the name the name of it is Kroz Pukatin, which means through the cracks mm. in Croatian. I did great, look that great up because I have a, a shirt. Pick, yeah, that's something yeah. that I might get excited about to kind of look forward to. The, like, yeah, the, the, the LP. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm psyched too. I'll yeah. definitely pick it up on vinyl when it comes out beautiful thus concludes my picks (laughs) 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 got through jim's technical difficulty yeah he made it though we got him in he made it thanks jim we're going next yeah the whole time he's been talking through this phone which is pretty amazing right are we done is that it are we over yeah that's like the last the last round the last round of the day i've got i'm going to announce your misery (laughs) <laughs> the, the next next week's episode i want to announce it like one more time because it's a different time to usual jim you were on too when i talked about the um, the rough guts the band rough guts from yes. the UK. three members are coming oh, on perfect. next week next week three members of the band are coming on and it's because they're in the uk it's a bit, a bit different time so next friday uh august 11th 6 p.m 6 p.m eastern 11 p.m uk 7 a.m japan time tune in for the next <laughs> next right week's episode yeah breakfast beers can't wait it's gonna be a good episode three blokes from the a way to follow up in a <laughs> seven o'clock oh, there, ah there we go <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Here, heroes of the night volume two i ordered mine it's like it's just well jordan you said that there might be a pressing issue or with the first press that, that, i mean that's the rumor, the rumor. I, the rumor. I, I i don't have it verified i just heard that okay all right. the great find that there's a rumor. few people that all right that they're doing a repress but i don't know all right gotcha 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 all right oh, are we still on the air we're still, we're still, yes yes yeah. Yeah, we're still on we're still on we're still on okay i can't tell adios okay okay yep yeah, let's round Wrap things up. Start talking shit, you know. I just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Jim. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Al. Until next time, stay healthy and. Stay